I started an orchid painting a few weeks ago and I managed to get it finished this week. In this video, I'll walk you through how I painted one of the orchids. My mother-in-law gave me a few stems of these beautiful cymbidium orchids a few years ago. I took a heap of photos of them at the time and I stored them on my computer for future reference. I took some photos inside and I took some of them outside in the sun and I ended up choosing this one to paint from. I liked the way the orchids were sitting which meant I didn't have to move things around or try to improve the composition and of course I loved the cast shadows that were on the petals. With this painting, to give the flowers more form and make them look less flat against the paper, I included some lost edges on some of the external petals. That's a lost edge there, there's another one, and there too. Over here there's one, and up here there's another one, and over here, and there's also one over here and I faded the colour away on the outer orchids. This one here, the colour is faded away. This one here is quite pale. And over here too, I faded those outer petals away. I kept the colour palette fairly simple. I used four Winsor & Newton colours. Winsor Lemon, French Ultramarine, Burnt Sienna and Permanent Rose and it's painted on Arche watercolour board. So let's have a look at one of the flowers. I started by painting some water onto this top right petal. I want to get a pale wash of colour over the top on the wet paper. I wet the paper because I don't want to cover the entire petal with paint. I want to leave an area on the outer edge with the white paper showing. Here you can see the water that I've got on my paper. I've covered the petal evenly. There are no puddles of water lying anywhere. I've kept the water within the edges of the petal and there's a good sheen on the surface. That's ready for me now to put some paint on. The main colour that I decided to use on the flowers was permanent rose, but I felt that permanent rose at its full intensity might have been too pink so I decided to mute the colour slightly or make it look a bit more earthy. I mixed some burnt sienna into it to neutralise it slightly. Then I started to paint it on lightly at first. This colour would be the palest value on the petals after the white of the paper. On this petal I have included a lost edge up here. By fading that outer edge away I can give the petal more form and make it look less flat against the paper. So here I'm using my brush to sop up excess paint so that I can leave the white of the paper showing along that section of the edge. I wet this petal with water and this time I left some white paper showing down the centre. And I did the same thing on this petal. I wet it first, then I painted the wash on quite pale. And again, I kept the paint away from that lost outer edge that I've got on this petal. When all the outer petals were washed in, I dried them really well with my hairdryer. And then I re-wet the inner part of this petal here with some water. When I painted the other petals, I mixed some permanent rose with French ultramarine and that's what I'll use now. That's this mixture here. And I painted that colour onto the wet paper. I'm painting on wet paper here because I want to make it darker down the bottom here where my brush is now. And as I work my way up, I want the colour to be lighter. So I'll put the paint on there and then I'll take the paint out of my brush and then I'll spread it out so that it's a bit lighter up the top. 
and that's what I'm doing now. I've got no paint in my brush. I washed the brush out and now I'm using the brush to push the paint that's on the paper up to the top. So it will be lighter at the top, darker down the bottom where I put the paint first. I moved down to this petal because I didn't want to disturb the petal that I just painted. I wet this one with water as well. I want to increase the colour around the outer edges. So I need some water on the paper to keep my paint edges soft. I went back to my first mixture of the two colours, permanent rose and a touch of burnt sienna. I painted that colour along this bottom edge. I'm still leaving the white of the paper showing in the middle and I'm not completely covering that first wash of colour. On the front of the petal I decided to drop in a bit of permanent rose on its own with nothing mixed with it. So this is permanent rose full intensity. And then I used that mixture of the two colours on this other side to darken it. I seem to be putting it on a bit darker up here. I've just taken the paint out of my brush now and I'm using my damp brush to pull that paint further down the petal. So it's darker in the top left corner. Now I want to paint the cast shadows on the orchid. I'll use the mixture of permanent rose, burnt sienna and French ultramarine. And I'll paint this on the dry paper. This particular cast shadow has got hard edges, so I don't need to wet the paper before I put it on. There's another little shadow here. I won't take it up as far as it is on the reference photo because I've got my lost edge there so I need to stop the paint. The other edge of this petal is a bit darker as well but the darker shape along there has got a soft edge running along it so I'm going to wet the paper before I put the paint on and that will give me that soft edge there. I used the same colour that I used for the cast shadows on the other side. That was burnt sienna and permanent rose mixed with a small amount of French ultramarine. And you can see because the paper's wet, that's giving me that soft edge along the front of it. I painted in the other cast shadows the same way. The shadows that had hard edges were painted on dry paper and the darker areas that had soft edges were painted on wet paper. This shadow area here had soft edges on the left side and where I'm painting now it had a hard edge so I'm painting that on the dry paper. So the left hand side of the paper was wet and that's giving me the soft edge along there and the right hand side of the paper was dry which has given me the hard edge. When I painted in the main petal in the middle I wet the paper first. I used the mixture of permanent rose and burnt sienna to paint around the edges. And now I'm wetting up here. I didn't wet the entire petal at first because I thought it would dry before I got to put the paint on there. So I did it in sections. This is the mixture of permanent rose with a touch of burnt sienna in it. I'm leaving the middle part of this petal white. I've also left a little white edge around the outside edge there. I was careful not to put the water on the outside edge. I kept it dry. There was a blush of yellow I could see on this petal so I wet that area with water and I mixed a bit of burnt sienna into Windsor lemon there. 
Here I'm using Windsor Lemon on its own. I didn't mix any burnt sienna with it. And I'm painting on the dry paper. Up the top here I've mixed a bit of burnt sienna into the Windsor Lemon. And again here I'm painting on the dry paper. It's time for me to start painting all the stripes on the petals. I do that on wet paper so that the marks I will make will have soft fuzzy edges. If I was to paint these stripes on dry paper, I'd get hard edge lines that would look too harsh on the petal. To make the task of painting these fine lines on the wet paper easier, earlier I mixed some French ultramarine and permanent rose together in a puddle on my palette and I dried the mixture off with my hairdryer. If you've watched some of my other videos, you've seen me do this before. Okay, so that petal is wet with water, so it's ready for me to put the paint on. The brush needs to be wet when I pick the dry paint up, but not too wet. And then I tentatively touch the surface with my brush to see what the paint's going to do. Now that's too wet. I've either got too much water on the paper, or I've got too much water in my brush. So here I'm sopping a bit of water back off the paper with my brush. I'm trying to use it to suck some of the water back up. I'll dab my brush on my cloth before I pick the paint up to make sure it's not too wet. And I'll try again. I need the paint to sit more or less where I put it, but I want it to have soft fuzzy edges. So I don't want it to spread too far. It's got to remain in a line if I can get it that way and it seems to be so I had to adjust the water on my paper I also took a little bit of moisture out of my brush before I picked the paint up let's try again so it's giving me the soft edges but it's still forming a line which is what I want when I do this sort of thing the other thing that I do is I wet the paper with a different brush to the brush that I picked the paint up with. That way I can pick the paint up with a slightly drier brush. It needs to be damp so that I can get that dry paint off the palette, but I don't need a lot of water in it because if it's too wet, the paint will spread too far on the paper. So it's a case of adjusting either the water on the paper or the water in my brush or both until I get it the way I want it. An advantage of painting on the wet paper like this is if I make a mark that I don't like, I can use a clean brush to take it off. If I put the line in the wrong place or it's sitting in the wrong direction or it's too thick, I can take it off with that other brush. I painted in the rest of those markings on the petals and then I mixed a grey from Burnt Sienna and French Ultramarine and I painted the shadows on around the throat of the orchid. For the dark pink markings that run around the outside edge of the lip, I want to paint them on wet paper again. So here I'm wetting the paper with water. This time I use permanent rose at its full intensity. I dab it onto the wet paper. The pigment is quite thick so it will more or less sit where I put it but because the paper is wet it will give me the soft fuzzy edges that I need. So I'm dabbing thick paint onto the wet paper here. I wet the paper in sections as well because I think it would dry before I got to paint on it. So I've just wet that other side now and I'll do the same thing. The thick permanent rose pigment. Just dabbing the tip of my brush onto the wet paper. And I'm doing the same thing here, the paper's wet, 
The paint's fairly thick. And that gives me all those dark markings around the lip. Here I'm using my small Rosemary & Co eradicator brush to remove some paint in the shadow area. These are great little brushes that I use all the time. They are flat brushes with really short bristles. I use them on their chisel edge to remove fine lines. They're stiff enough to soften the paint, but they are soft enough that they won't damage the paper as long as I'm fairly gentle with them. The brush is wet, the paper's dry, and I rub gently over the paint to soften it. I use a paper towel to remove the paint. I'm removing the paint that sits in the middle of those lines that I painted on earlier. Creates a little highlight there on the shadow. I've put a link for these brushes in the description of the video. And there's my finished painting. This painting took me a while to finish. I painted it over a few days and as a result I've got nearly eight hours of footage to edit into a full-length tutorial for my Patreon site. So there will be a full-length tutorial of it, but it'll take me a while to get it done, so have patience with me. These little eradicator brushes that you saw me use at the end are brilliant. I don't know how I used to manage without them. If you want to get some yourself, there's a link in the description of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope this video was helpful to you. Please give it a like and make sure you subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in my next video. Hi everyone. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> My mother-in-law gave me a few stems of these beautiful cymbidium, bidium, 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 cymbidium orchids. My mother-in-law gave me a few stems of these beautiful cymbidium orchids. Um, orchids, 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 cymbidium orchids. I started, I started, I started an orchid painting a few weeks ago. These little, oh, I haven't got them. Not these, these little eradicator brushes that you saw me use. And I don't have them here to show you. Downstairs. Got them. This painting, hair in my face. It's painted on ash, coal pressed watercolour bir bird. Yep. This is ash, coal pressed watercolour bird. <laughs>